A while ago, I saw a video from Air Command Water Rockets where they took a long camera boom and put it on the side of the rocket, and it was held in place by a rubber band and was hinged at the bottom so it could deploy during flight and get kind of a third-person selfie stick view of the rocket. And I thought this was really, really cool and wanted to kind of do it myself. And so recently, when I needed to fly this rocket for some avionics testing, I thought it would be a really cool opportunity to fly the selfie stick. So this is my design that uses the selfie stick on the back here. Up at the top of the stick we have this little keychain camera and this 3D printed mount. It's held on by a bolt going through these little tabs, and this allows me to tighten it down really tight to point it at the angle I want, so it's pointing mostly at the center of the rocket when the camera's deployed. Holding the stick at the bottom of the rocket is another little 3D printed hinge piece. There's a screw on the back that cuts into the wood and holds everything in place, and another little M5 bolt. This is attached to a ring that goes around and is just duct taped in place with the fins. In the middle of the rocket here is the avionics bay, and this houses the, all the flight electronics, and then we have a servo to control the selfie stick release, and another one to control the parachute release. On the top we got a couple of Lego guys just for fun, and they might be able to be seen from the camera when it's in its stowed position, I'm not completely sure. Although the selfie stick is kind of the star of the show here, more important is the avionics setup. The main part of this is this Starlight flight computer that I purchased. It can detect barometric altitude, acceleration on all three axes, and gyroscope values on all three axes. I did buy this commercially, but it is running some custom code that I don't fully trust until I can get some flight test data on it. Because of this, I have this receiver, and it can do servo outputs. It gets controlled by an RC remote on the ground, and this is in control of the parachutes. This makes sure that if the flight computer does something we don't like, nothing happens to the rocket. It will still come down under parachute. I've used this receiver on a ton of rockets before, and they're very reliable as long as everything's set up correct. This flight computer is a bit of an unknown, and to test it, it is in control of the servo that releases the selfie stick. The avionics stack is supplied power by these two batteries. They're both two cell batteries. One of them powers the flight computer, and one of them powers the receiver. The avionics bay is really designed and sized to fit just the flight computer and not the extra batteries and wiring to use the receiver. So, it's kind of tricky to get everything in there and I thought I would film that process to show you how it works. With the flight computer battery plugged in, we're just gonna power it on real quick to check that it turns on. See the red light, we're good. Okay, this is the assembled avionics package. You can see we have the receiver here and the battery for the receiver. On the back, we have the battery for the flight computer, and down here we have a little electrical switch for the computer. Now that this is all assembled, we're going to put it in the actual avionics bay of the rocket. Okay, now everything's plugged in. We can try to slide this whole package into the tube and get everything to fit. All right, got that slid in there, had to rearrange some wires a bit, but you can see it sits nice and flush at the bottom here, and all of the electronics are in there. And once we tuck some of these wires in, this nose cone payload section will be able to fit nicely on top. One of the last ground tests I all, almost always do on these rockets is what I call a wet dress rehearsal. So I'll pressurize it all the way, depressurize it, and then flip the switch to activate the parachute deploy to just make sure everything works. It's an excellent final check. All these systems have already been checked, but it's a double check to make sure everything's still good to go. So the first thing I'm gonna do is pressurize it to 100 PSI, which is the launch pressure, and just make sure nothing's leaking. All right, we're at 100 PSI. Now to simulate a launch without actually releasing it, I'm just going to pull the abort valve on the launch pad air control section here and uh, release all the pressure from the rocket. Okay, that simulates the launch, and so now I'm going to just flip this lever on the RC remote and release the parachute. 
All right, looks like the parachute came out. I'll just pull on it to make sure everything comes undone nicely. With a little bit of pulling, that came to a point where it was able to be inflated if this was in flight. So that's a good test. With this rocket fully assembled and tested, it's time to head out to the launch site and give it a test. Before I show you the onboard footage from the selfie stick, I want to talk about how the flight went. As you could probably tell from the videos, it was suboptimal. The parachute didn't really come out. You're probably wondering why that happened. It wasn't really a failure in the parachute systems, it was mainly just that the rocket didn't go high enough. We had two batteries, the flight computer, the receiver, a couple Lego guys, and mainly the selfie stick added a lot of mass to the rocket and it's kind of already overweight. So it only went to about 50 feet in altitude, which is just not high enough to get the parachute out. The flight computer though worked pretty well. You could see that it was able to release the selfie stick. All right, now I'll go show you the onboard footage. <laughs> The onboard footage is pretty cool, but it could be better. It was a little dark and the onboard camera doesn't work very well in dim gray lighting like when it's cloudy. And because the rocket didn't go very high, it wasn't deployed for very long before it hit the ground. We decided to fly it again to try to see if it was any better, and so we set it up for another launch. So the second flight was better, we did get the parachute out at all, but it was still pretty close to the ground. Also though, the selfie stick didn't deploy. This was due to a problem with the flight computer, which we will talk about more in the next video, which will be focused on specifically the flight computer. A big underlying issue though is that this rocket is just too heavy and doesn't have enough power to get high enough to get a parachute out while carrying the selfie stick. I do want to refly the selfie stick in the future, but it'll be a little while and it'll be on a much better rocket, hopefully to some even higher altitudes to get some really cool shots. That's all for now though, see you next time.